This is the 19th session, which is entitled Childbirth, a Traumatic Experience. This presentation um, came against the background that childbirth is a celebrated and positive stage in the woman's life. For some women, the experience of childbirth is not quite a positive, so positive and can adversely affect psychological health and well-being. The presentation will focus on all various issues surrounding this important issue. Our speaker is none other than Paula Miller. Paula is a qualified occupational psychologist and she's pursuing her PhD at the Center for Maternal, Fetal and Infant Research at the Ulster University in Northern Ireland. Paula takes on an interdisciplinary approach to her doctoral research focusing on the impact of birth trauma and maternal mental health and investigate the efficacy of an early intervention in reducing wide ranging short and long term effects. She is supported by her professors, Professor Sinclair, Professor Gillian, Professor McCulloch and Professor Miller and some of them are here supporting her. So, Paula, I now hand over to you. So, yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody. Um, I'm so pleased to be here with you today. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Talking about childbirth. Um, and childbirth as a traumatic experience today. Um, and when I sent my abstract um, for this talk back in January, I, I never would have imagined that we would be in the situation that we are all faced with today in the midst of the COVID crisis. I'd originally planned on talking about childbirth as a traumatic experience, and I actually, we are all of us living in an extremely uncertain and sensitive environment. And I just wanted to acknowledge this before we begin talking about birth trauma, because the environment in which we find ourselves in at the moment really does affect all of us in different ways. And it's great that we're really able to connect um, here on this platform today. I just also want to thank um, the mothers who are referred to in these slides. Um, and I want to thank the authors and the work that I've referred to throughout. I'm going to discuss what a traumatic birth is, um, and I'll talk about the effects of traumatic, traumatic birth experience on the mother and infant, um, and various ways of producing these effects, as well as the current evidence on interventions to alleviate psychological systems, um, symptoms associated with traumatic birth. And then finally, we're going to finish with a guided stabilisation exercise. Um, and this is going to be a bit of an experiential exercise. And I really encourage and invite everyone to take part in this. Um, and as evidence has really demonstrated that um, it's effective in, in reducing stress symptoms. And I think um, most of us could, could do with that at the moment. We're just going to start off with a little poll. Um, just want to find a little bit about what your level of knowledge of perinatal mental health issues surrounding birth trauma is. Um, so if you could um, please click A, B, C or D. No knowledge, introductory knowledge, intermediate and advanced. Paul, you need to click on the poll button. Um, I'm clicking quick poll. Is that That's the one. one. That's the one. Um, doesn't seem to be doing anything. Well, it has been a bit slow on and off today, so that might be it. Uh, you might have. Oh, well, you'll have to scroll. I think you'll have to scroll through the chat to get a, a feel for it then, I'm afraid. That's OK. Uh, it looks like we have a quite a mix. 
of introductory, mostly introductory and intermediate. So that's great. That just gives me a little bit of an idea um, of, of where we're at. What does trauma mean? If we know someone is upset or angry, we would usually ask, what's wrong? Um, and, and that really implies that there's something wrong with that person. But in a traumatology model, we ask, what has happened to you? Because adverse reaction to, to an adverse event or experience is actually perfectly normal. So it's really about looking at the subjective experience um, and acknowledging the reaction to it and processing that reaction uh, to find some sort of meaning and, and higher order resolution um, to the traumatic experience. The mental health problems um, we see as the result of the original trauma um, or upsetting um, event, which actually causes the disturbing memory to, to become unprocessed in the brain and it remains stuck in the brain and unresolved. So the individual who has experienced a trauma looks at life in a certain way through this trauma lens. And in the trauma traumatology model, we try to help people move through the traumatic experience and really get to the root of the problem for resolution. Um, so how do we process information in a, in a trauma model? Um, information is processed through the brain. Um, I don't know if anyone has heard of the Maclean's triune model of the brain. Um, I'll, I'll just do talk a little bit about that. Um, so we, we have the primitive brain, which is otherwise known as the reptilian complex. And this is the system of the brain. Um, it's the, the cerebellum basically connects with the brain stem, back of the brain, and it's responsible for the most basic survival functions. So we're looking at body sensations, responses, um, the automatic functioning of the heart rate, breathing, body temperature. Um, and, and so these areas of the brain perform really important unconscious activity. Um, we don't know about it. We're not aware of its performance. Um, so for example, if we touch um, an object which is really hot, um, our hand will automatically move away from it. And that's our primitive reptilian brain um, in action. It's really fast, quick, unconscious sort of evaluation of sensory stimuli um, and it's the automatic instinctive response to it's a fear response. Um, then we have the uh, limbic system which is known as the emotional or the mammalian brain and it's the reactive part of us that initiates that fight flight or freeze response in reaction to a stress or a stressful situation. So the key areas of the limbic brain are the hippocampus, the amygdala, and the hypothalamus um, and, and this part of the brain is responsible for um, our emotions and our memories and our habits and it's really essential for decision making. Um, so these form a, a really fast subconscious evaluation and response system that's designed to keep us safe. Um, and then finally the higher order level of the brain is the neocortex um, and it, it deals with uh, language and imagination and um, those conscious activities that we're aware of for reasoning and rationalizing and decision making. Um, so the amygdala in, in the emotional part of the brain, the limbic system, it's like a security checkpoint at the airport. And the amygdala scans for any threat or danger. Um, and if it identifies that uh, the, the information that's coming in is safe, and isn't threatening, it will then allow that information to come through into the higher order of the brain, up to the neocortex, um, and allow us to make clear choices and rational decision making. Um, and, and, and here it's then integrated um, uh, into the other parts of the brain. Um, so if there is a traumatic response to an event, the amygdala will not send those signals through to the higher order of the brain, um, which then affects decision making um, and the trauma memory will then become stuck in the limbic brain. Um, so if the trauma remains unresolved, it, it, it can actually remain there for a long period of time and it can cause, start to cause symptoms of stress symptoms and post-traumatic stress disorder. So um, that just 
gives a little bit of background um, on, on what trauma is. So how do we associate trauma with such um, an amazing life event, giving birth? Um, I mean, look at that picture, it's just so adorable. The creation um, of a new life and, and giving birth to offspring is an incredibly amazing experience for a woman um, and, and also for those witnessing it. And uh, Donald Winnicott, uh, he, he is a pediatrician and psychoanalyst, um, he was especially influential in the field of object relations theories and, and developmental psychology. Um, and when he caught, realised um, his famous quote, there's no such thing as an infant, and it really highlighted the fact of the baby's dependency on, on parents and, um, and how um, the baby's sense of self really is dependent on the parent's emotional state. Um, so the, the, the parent-infant relationship was really the core of his contribution to, to psychoanalysis. And actually, if the mother or the father experience a trauma, that, that will directly influence the child. Um, and similarly, if a community in which that child lives in experiences a trauma, again, this will affect the family, the child. And if we zoom out the town, the city, the country, if the world, as we are at the moment, experiences a trauma or a humanitarian crisis, um, then the child will also be affected in, in a whole systems theory. Um, so what can we do, um, especially during these un, uncertain and difficult times? Um, we'll, we'll go through a stabilisation exercise later on um, that you might find helpful in your own self-care routine um, as with midwives. Um, and as, of course, students and researchers. Um, if we just move on to what, what is a traumatic birth? What exactly is it? Um, so I have a few definitions here. Um, definition offered by NICE, um, which is the National Institute for Clinical Excellence. Um, traumatic birth includes births, whether preterm or full term, which are physically traumatic, and births that are experienced as traumatic, even when the delivery is obstetrically straightforward. So it's the perceived experience of the birth, um, which is which is seen as being traumatic, and that's perfectly plausible, as well as the physical uh, trauma experienced. Other authors, there are various um, different uh, explanations of traumatic birth and birth trauma. Greenfield here says it's the emergence of a baby from its mother in a way that involves events or care which cause deep distress or psychological disturbance, which may or may not involve physical injury, but results in psychological distress of an enduring nature. Um, and Penny Sinkin, uh, who is the co-founder of PATCH, that's the Prevention and Treatment of Traumatic Birth. And Penny says that a birth is said to be traumatic when the individual believes that the mother or her baby's life is in danger, or that a serious threat to the mother's or her baby's physical or emotional integrity existed. Birth Trauma Association um, suggests that birth trauma is actually a shorthand phrase for post-traumatic stress disorder after childbirth. And sometimes this is referred to as postpartum post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and in most cases, what really makes birth traumatic is the fear that you or your baby are going to die. So, Post-traumatic stress disorder um, induced by childbirth um, is real. Um, and as I said, it is sometimes referred to as postpartum post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, but for a diagnosis, uh, we need the criterion A of, of PTSD, um, as in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Um, and so that's the American Psychiatric Association, and that's the DSM-5 criterion A. 
So the person needs to have had exposure to actual or threatened death, serious injury or sexual violence by direct exposure, um, witnessing the trauma or um, learning that a relative or close friend was exposed to a trauma um, or any sort of indirect exposure to details of the trauma, which could be um, uh, outside of the birth trauma arena, you know, it could be first responders or medics um, or midwives uh, who have witnessed a, tra a, a traumatic event. Um, and then we have the International Classification of Diseases and their criteria on A in terms of um, classification is that uh, the individual needs to have had exposure to a stressful event or a situation of exceptionally threatening or horrific nature likely to cause pervasive distress in almost anyone. This is a quote um, by uh, a lady with lived experience of post-traumatic stress disorder following childbirth. I had a traumatic birth. I was so petrified that my son would die that in my head it was easier not to love him just in case. So we have uh, symptoms which are specifically uh, related to PTSD following childbirth um, um, and uh, that uh, that includes re-experiencing um, and reliving aspects of the trauma. Um, that's intrusions, um, alterations in arousal and reactivity, so uh, hypervigilance, difficulty in concentrating. Um, we were talking earlier about the, the limbic brain and the higher order neocortex, avoidance, Avoidance of trauma related thoughts, um, feelings and reminders of the memory. Negative alterations in um, cognition and mood. Um, feeling difficulty, feeling any sort of positivity. Um, blame, exaggerated blame um, on, on uh, the person themselves or on others. Um, extreme negative thoughts um, and uh, sometimes feelings of isolation. Um, these are some examples of um, negative thoughts and cognitions that can arise from a, from a traumatic birth. Um, so we have feelings of uh, uh, threats to safety. My baby or I am in danger. Um, and so if, if one of the ladies that you're working with is feeling like this, you can empathize with her feelings and, and questions and really focus on what she needs to do and help her accept what's going to happen um, to her. So in terms of epidural, cesarean or instrumental delivery, um, you help her focus on what she needs to do to get through the birth. You're really handling the situation that she's in, she finds herself in. And that empathy is really so important um, and letting her know that she is so important in the process um, that she needs to take part and she, 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 is, um, she is very much in control of what she's doing. Um, we talk about lack of control. I am powerless. I have no control over my body. Um, um, at that point, you, you may perhaps need to take charge um, and calmly give her attention and guide her through the rhythm and the breathing through contractions and um, think about uh, her particular preference in pain medication. Um, and if she prefers to avoid medication. Um, perhaps it's you know it's a good idea to be before the birth have a, some sort of a code word um, to to say if a labour is going to be too long or difficult and she, she might want to change her mind and she really wants pain medication. Um, and so that means that she can really she can complain um, without people misinterpreting her complaints as 
request for medication. Defectiveness, I'm a bad mother, I was not good at giving birth. Um, and really in, in that instance, you know, what you can do, you can assure the woman that really all births are so very different and she worked as hard as she possibly could throughout birthing um, her child and um, make sure that she knows what she did do well um, and give her some sort of positive feedback on any aspect of her birth. The prevalence rates of traumatic birth, um, 25, 54% of women report their births as traumatic. Um, and but a small percentage of those go on to develop post-traumatic stress disorder. There's a lot of variability in those figures because um, of the variability in the populations that have, have been assessed. A recent survey conducted um, in the UK here um, by Make Birth Better, 343 women showed that 30% of new mums suffering from mental or physical trauma following their birth are not actually being offered the support that they need to cope. 75% felt that they didn't get the support they needed following a traumatic birth experience. Um, and a survey of 332 maternity and mental health professionals reported that 63% um, felt that the main barrier to birth trauma prevention um, is lack of knowledge, 62% said that birth trauma skills was the most reported training need by staff at the moment. Um, well, that was 2019. There are a number of risk factors um, that are associated with post-traumatic stress disorder following childbirth. So um, the labour experience itself, so if the lady feels in terms of her subjective experience, that um, uh, it was traumatic and horrendous and horrific, that's obviously going to increase her risk of developing post-traumatic stress disorder um, following birth. Mode of birth is extremely important. Um, there is a, a very high rate of um, association between um, obstetric um, instruments of delivery um, and cesarean um, and post-traumatic stress disorder following childbirth. Fear of uh, own or baby's life, previous trauma, so adverse childhood experiences, um, the, the, there's a strong association with um, adverse childhood experiences and PTSD following childbirth. It can be a trigger, childbirth can actually be a trigger for um, various memories involved in, in those adverse experiences that have previously been um, um, suffered. Uh, previous psychological problems um, increases the likelihood of post-traumatic stress disorder um, and service delivery. So um, we're looking at uh, the way in which care is delivered um, during delivery. Um, So the NICE clinical guideline, which has been updated February 2020, suggests that um, during birth, that healthcare professionals should be understanding um, and afterwards they should offer women advice and support if they really like it. Um, and they should not offer therapy whilst reliving the experience, as evidence suggests that this isn't helpful. Um, and so NICE uh, did conduct a systematic review um, and this uh, was the conclusion that they came to in terms of care following traumatic birth. I'm not sure if you can see this, it, it's, um, it's, it actually just demonstrates the care pathways. Um, set out in uh, the NICE guidelines for uh, screening and treatment of perinatal mental health problems. Um, so here in the UK, um, 
for anxiety, tocophobia, fear of birth and postnatal depression, we have clear pathways. For uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, it's not quite so clear. The recommendation is to follow the post-traumatic stress disorder adult guidelines. Um, and the adult guidelines suggest um, firstly offering peer support. So peer support groups are just so very, just excellent. They're really helpful. Um, and there's some fantastic peer support groups out there. Um, I have some resources at the end of the slide um, that I can distribute freely. Um, you can just let me know if you'd like them. Um, I'm following on from peer support in the first instance. Psychoeducation, so talking to the, the lady about um, what happens a little bit like the, the triune brain model that we talked about before um, that's really helpful for women to understand what exactly has happened um, and the process of how trauma moves through the brain um, and, and why perhaps she's feeling the symptoms that she's feeling offer flexible modes of delivery so prevention within one month if symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder or acute stress disorder with CBT, narrative therapy, prolonged exposure therapy. But one of the things with that is that um, we, we don't want to offer any sort of therapy that involves reliving the experience. So prolonged exposure therapy perhaps isn't ideal for a woman who has experienced a traumatic birth. After one month, offer all of these therapies, it says, nice uh, suggest including EMDR and EMDR is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing just moving on to to, to treatment interventions for post-traumatic stress sort of postpartum and um, just going back to the survey that was conducted by make birth better of 343 women what kind of support did you get um, and uh, so here we see uh, debriefing 31%, health visitors for listening visits 9%, um, community mental health team 15%, 10% of women were referred to a different mental health or psychological therapy service, 9% were given advice on a different option. Um, and if you were referred for therapeutic help on the NHS, what kind of therapy did you have? 47% received CBT, 7% received EMDR, 3% received support over the phone, 2% online support. 41% um, were offered other support, which included group support, home visits, um, or uh, counselling in general. Um, when women were asked, did your treatment resolve your mental health suffering? 13% of women said their trauma was resolved, 54% said to a certain extent, and 33% said that their trauma was not resolved. So uh, this data really demonstrates the need um, to have a good look at the current system and, and what is being offered to women. The options actually are in preventing, treating and resolving women's mental health suffering as, as, as a result of trauma. The midwives were also asked, what would most enable you to feel more confident in preventing, recognising, managing and treating birth trauma? And 332 responded, 59% felt bespoke training for their own service, 9.9% wanted access to birth trauma related resources, 55% identified that access to special advice would be helpful and 62% wanted specific skills like grinding techniques. So here we have um, a, the International Society for Traumatic Stress uh, Studies um, and they have suggested um, for as a result of, of um, evidence-based guidelines, the heart, most highly effective standard treatment um, is trauma-focused CBT um, and EMDR for post-traumatic stress disorder. Just aware of the time, so I'm just moving through the slides. And current treatment interventions for PTSD postpartum 
Um, so looking at the evidence from systematic reviews, there is really inconclusive evidence in terms of debriefing and whether debriefing is actually effective in reducing symptoms. Some studies have, have demonstrated um, a, 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 a small effect um, in terms of reducing symptoms, um, and some have, de have not demonstrated any effect at all. Um, other psychological interventions um, that have demonstrated an effect for reducing symptomology um, are expressive writing, midwifery led counselling, EMDR, cognitive task following birth, um, and they demonstrated that the symptoms did reduce, but they did not prevent or treat the occurrence of clinically diagnosed post-traumatic stress disorder. When we're working with clients to process trauma, it's, it's not a mechanical process of following a set of instructions or a routine type of therapy or intervention. And one of the most important aspects of the treatment is actually the presence of the therapist, the counsellor or the midwife, or um, the healthcare professional who is delivering the intervention. Um, and Rogers, uh, he, he, his uh, famous quote is really the, the fact that what is the most important element of any therapeutic relationship is unconditional positive regard. And what does that mean? Jerome Frank, um, he talks about what makes an effective therapy. Um, and he suggests an emotionally charged relationship, a therapeutic environment and a rationale that provides an explanation for symptoms, the procedure to resolve those symptoms. And Professor Miller, uh, his model of Kale, which is a Gaelic term and it can be translated as victorious people, um, which uh, we'll just work through. The, the first aspect is connect and con connection um, between yourself and the woman um, in terms of allowing the woman to be vulnerable in a really safe environment in a safe way. You can encourage the lady to ask questions and talk about possible alternatives to her birth. Affirm that connection between your woman and, and um, yourself is, is just so important supportive relationship, you, that, that upholding and defending her whenever she needs you to advocate for her and offering her emotional support and encouragement throughout the birth, really acknowledging how your lady is feeling and explaining what's happening and, and what's really needed to correct um, the situation if it needs to be corrected. And, and that reassurance is so important for her. And empower that connection really enables your lady to achieve the journey and the birthing journey, empowering her to really develop her confidence and the, the ability to give birth to her baby. It's a natural process and she can do it. Um, and, you know, that e empathy, empathise with her feelings and, and really question and focus on what she needs to do to maintain her baby's well-being. And then moving on to um, the three L's and the three L's represent how we aim to bring about that therapeutic dynamic. Listen, really consider her what she wants regarding um, pain medication, um, love, compassion, respect. It's just such a key part of midwifery care. Learn, we're learning all the time and resilience is actually a really vitally important factor in protecting the woman from post-traumatic stress disorder following birth. Resilience includes various different aspects and um, learning is, is, is one of those and gathering as much information as, as you can and being as prepared mentally um, as, as she can. Moving on, treatment in interventions. Um, yes, yeah, so wanted to touch on um, the, the new evidence that has just come through for EMDR 
um, as effective as an early intervention. So this particular intervention was delivered within days of, of the birth um, and within one session uh, it, it reduced symptoms of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and prevented those uh, post-traumatic stress disorder from developing. Um, Paulo, just asking you to wind up at this time. Sorry to interrupt you. Okay. All right. So uh, this is the last slide. Why early intervention? Um, it's really, it's been found that 70% of costs relating to perinatal mental health are actually related to the infant. Um, and post-traumatic stress disorder is no different. Um, the, there are wide ranging short and long term effects. So um, you can see them all here. Uh, depression, all the comorbid perinatal mental health disorders. Um, mother's physical health, neuroendocrine, fibromyalgia, irritable bowel. The mother infant relationship, which is so important. The infant's cognitive development, behavior, temperament, social and emotional development are all affected by uh, postpartum post-traumatic stress disorder. I just want to finish with this slide um, with uh, the, the, the iceberg, and I'm sure many of you have seen this particular picture before. And the human mind is really, it's made up of 12% conscious mind, which is the surface and the tip of the iceberg, um, and the 88%, which is the subconscious mind, and that's what's under the surface. Um, and this includes all the triggers and the relational patterns and the true feelings and the raw emotions. Um, and it, it's really those emotions that we're targeting when we're looking at post-traumatic stress disorder, what, what is underneath the surface. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I apologise, we didn't get to do our stabilisation exercise, but if you do want to email me, I have the exercises that... Um, that are recorded um, and you can you can um, take yourself through them they are really helpful and i would encourage you um, and invite you to to um to do those in your own time and thank you so much for coming and happy day of the midwife thank you so much paula so paula have come to the end of her presentation and I see where we have a question, Paulo. Um, what are some of the questions that um, midwives can ask new, new moms about in guiding the screening process? I would assume to, you know, to prevent or to identify if they were, were if they perceived that their birth was traumatic. How do we go about doing that? Yes, that, that's a really good question, Cynthia. Um, well, firstly, uh, if we're looking at post-traumatic stress disorder, um, there needs to be the, the criterion A. Um, mm. So if, if the mother feels that um, her birth has been um, traumatic and her experience has really affected her then that that's the that's a qualifying criterion a um, and then following on from that in terms of diagnosis uh, she she would need to speak to her gp and perhaps get a referral um, for for a full diagnosis um, that there, there are um, self-help groups and community groups available um, that, that she could go to to, to get um, support in that area. At the moment, um, we, we don't have any screening, any routine screening for post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really good question. Um, mm -hmm. And with, with trauma, and with the, within a traumatology model, we actually see not just post-traumatic stress disorder, but all of the other comorbid 
disorders that go alongside PTSD. Um, so postpartum depression, for example, um, it is, is routinely screened for, which is fantastic and it's great. Um, but sometimes PTSD and those stress symptoms can be overlooked. Um, and if the stress symptoms and the, the PTSD is not resolved, um, we, we continue to have these symptoms of avoidance, um, which can make treatment um, and resolution extremely difficult. Uh, does, does that answer your question? Um, I, we have a lot to do in terms of uh, screening and identifying um, symptoms following traumatic birth. Um, and it's it really, as, as, as midwives, it's really important to advocate for women um, who have experienced a traumatic birth um, in terms of really getting the correct diagnosis and also the correct treatment. Thank you so much. Um, I see many questions coming in. Um, your, your presentation has generated a lot of questions. Unfortunately, we are not able to take any more questions, but I just want to say that um, persons are asking for your email, so you could put that in the chat if it's okay with you, and we will continue all right, so congratulations. Thanks so much, Cynthia.